wants you to be a success. God wants you to be a success. God wants you to realize everything that he has promised you. Whether it's in your family, your job, your relationships, your health. God wants you to be a success. I got a word for you. If you have your Bibles, turn it to 1 John chapter 5. Just keep this in mind. God wants you. You say, God wants me to be a success. Are you sure, Pastor? You know, I think I'm doing all right, but you sure he has a plan for me also? Yes. God wants you to overcome. What's that song? We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. But with God, all things are possible. And with God, it is always seed time and harvest time. So we are already in the set time because God has made a way for us to be a success. Okay, 1 John chapter 5. I'll start at verse 1. And listen to this carefully because this is going to make a difference in your life. And this is what does it for all of us. And it's 1 John chapter 5. That's the other John, the one way in the back by, by revelation. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. You say, Pastor, I know that. And everyone that loves him, that begat love of him also, that is begotten of him. Mm -mm. So you love God, God loves you, and God loves Jesus. We're all loved. But this we know, that we love the children of God. By this we know, that we love the children of God. See, when we believe in Jesus, it's just something in us that causes us to love the children of God. And this is shown when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous to us. And here we're not talking about the Ten Commandments. We're talking about the love of the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. And to love your neighbor. As you love yourself. So we're talking about how to have the best life. And that is by loving God and keeping his commandments. For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God. Listen to this. Overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God. Wow. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Mm. You're born of God because you believe in Jesus, right? Here's a promise right here that tells you. You're born of God. You're going to overcome the world. Whatever it is that's going on in your life. Whatever might come up the road, whatever kind of shenanigans the enemy might bring, you're going to overcome the world. All right. Now let's go to Exodus chapter 17. Thank you, Lord. And on your way there, let's stop by Joshua, the book of Joshua. Let's go there first. He said, oh, Joshua. Oh, Joshua. Stop by Josh, Joshua. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Joshua is a type of 
Christ. We're going to go to Joshua first before we go to Exodus. In Joshua chapter 1. And somebody thinks they read my mind. I know where she's going, Joshua 1. I know, I know where she's going with this. Well, because the Holy Spirit revealed that to you. That's exactly where I'm going with this. This is the Lord talking to Joshua. And sometimes we need God to talk to us, don't we, Minister Andre? Sometimes we want to get a word from God himself. We need encouragement. We want to know that if what we're doing is going to be fruitful, or is it going to fall apart? Am I wasting my time? What is this? But he tells Joshua exactly how to make his way successful. And if we listen to this, then our way will be successful. We've already been promised that it will be successful. But I got something to tell you. Listen closely right here. And we're going to be right here. I'm going to start on verse five. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, uh, uh. You know, when you see the Bible, you know what I mean? Every time you look at it, you see something different. But uh, I'll, I'll pick up here at verse three. Okay, let me start at verse three of Joshua, chapter one. And uh, God is telling Joshua, look now, uh, Moses is dead. So I got a plan for you. Verse three, he says, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I will have given to you, as I said to Moses. Wait a minute, somebody heard that and said, I'll take this. He said, every place where your foot, your soul steps on, I'm giving it to you. Oh, oh y'all didn't hear that. I, I, I know you couldn't have heard that because you're still sitting down. Every place that the sole of your feet will tread upon, I've given to you, as I said to Moses. That sounds like success right there. That sounds like equipment to overcome the world right there. No matter what's going on. Skip down to verse five. No man shall be able. Nobody shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. That means nobody can get with you, get up in your face and say, well, I thought you, uh-uh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. No man shall be, or woman, <laughs> or spirit, or witch, or warlock. No demon from hell, excuse me, sweetheart, for saying that. But no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. This is a promise. See, by the time you leave here today, you're going to know why you're able to overcome the world. It won't be any more crying in your milk unless you're feeling sorry for somebody that doesn't believe who's not going to be able to have access to these things. Because we already read that he who believes on him is the one that's going to overcome the world. Thank you. So as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. I'm not going to leave you or forsake you. Some, sounds a little bit like the good shepherd. Yes, he's, I'm not going to leave you or forsake you. He says, verse six, be strong and of good courage. For to this people, you shall divide as an inheritance the land I swore to give their fathers to give them. Be strong and of good courage. I'm getting ready to give you this land, this house, this opportunity, these things. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. He said, I'm giving it to you as an inheritance. Mm. Be strong and courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may prosper. Everywhere you go, he could have said, be mm, successful or a success wherever you go. And then he gives us the formula. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Mm, 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 mm. That means keep on mumbling the word of God. Lord, you said that I'm an overcomer. 
Lord, you said that I am in success. Lord, you have said. Keep saying it. He says, don't let it depart from your mouth. That means don't let it get out, away from your mouth. And you say, I said it and I'm through. No, it's always in your mouth. Lord, you said I would live and not die and declare the goodness of the Lord while I'm yet in the land of the living. You said it. I want success in this area. He said, keep it in your mouth. Keep it in your mouth. And then he says, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Think about it. Go to bed. Lord, you said mama's going to be all right. Lord, you said this sickness is not unto death. Lord, you said that you sent your word and healed them all. Lord, you said by your stripes, we are all healed. Lord, you said it. Throw it back at him. You said it. I'm meditating on it. I'm mulling it over in my mind and in my heart. And then he says that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Huh. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. Mm, mm, mm. Keep the word in your mouth. Meditate on it, then follow the instructions. If, I mean, if the doctor said take two aspirins, half a glass of water, and a hot bath, would you go do it? All right, then. Keep the word in your mouth. Think about it, dream about it. Wake up in the middle of the night. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Hallelujah. And then go do what he says to do. Now I have a story. Now we're finally back to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus chapter 17. Okay. Now I just want to give you a scenario. <clears throat> now God has said that we're going to overcome. But you got to be humble. Humble. You got to the Hebrew word for humble is uh, enough. A N A K, enough. And it means to be needy, oppressed, lowly, poor, afflicted, weak. You got to be enough. You got to be modest. You got to be meek. You got to be lowly. Well, see, that goes against everything my mom taught me. I don't know about your mom. We're strong people. We're going out here to conquer the world. Let's go on out there. Put your shoulders back and get on out there. But Jesus is telling us that the most humble person in the world was Moses. Moses. See, his sister and them and brother, some of the Israelites, they made fun of him because he married a black woman. Oh, or he married somebody we didn't think you should be marrying. But God loved him and called him humble. And God did great things with Moses. Now, let me show you what a humble man has done. Have you gotten Exodus chapter 17? And see, we picked this up right after God promises Moses and the children. Say, I'm going to give you, because they were complaining. Out in the wilderness, they had just crossed the Red Sea. You would think that would have been enough, right, Rose? You would say, well, we crossed the Red Sea. Come on now, we can make it. You know, you know we go to Kroger's, the prices are low, and we'll be all right. But it didn't quite work out like that. They said, we want some good food, you know. Uh, and God says, listen, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to send you meat in the evening and bread in the morning. And when they saw the bread, they said, well, what's this? How many of you know you can please some of the people some of the time and some of the people 
all the time, but you can't please all the people all the time. You just can't do that. So anyway, and we're going to pick it up here and where we're going, is there was a situation with this group of people called the Amalekites. And as soon, no sooner, just like what happens with you, as soon as you get a hold of the word and you get to feeling good with God and you say, I'm on my way, and then you get attacked from a place you didn't know you would get attacked from because they snuck up on you. Kind of like this coronavirus did. See, we were all doing well, weren't we? Everybody was all right, weren't we? Wasn't bad as this, was it? No. But as soon as we got a little hook on what we thought God was taking us, and then all of a sudden from nowhere it seems that this virus came. And the same thing happened with the Israelites. Soon as they crossed over to the other side, Here's this group of people, the Amalekites. They're going to sneak and attack them from behind. But Moses is saying, humble Moses. He says, Joshua, I'm going to send you on down there to fight. And I'm going to go up here to this mountain. And let's see what happens. Remember now, God has said that we only believe we will overcome. If you meditate on my word day and night, you will be a success. And God loved Moses. Moses was God's man. He was the one that God chose. Moses was left as a child in a little basket on a river. But God hooked him up, saved his life, and brought him to a place called today in our conversation. Here we go. Exodus chapter 17, starting at verse 9. Mm. And so we know now, here's this battle about to go. And Moses said to Joshua, choose us some men and go out and fight with Amalek. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Now, Amalek, those people, let me just say this. The Hebrew word means those that lick up. So what kind of people do that? Well, let me tell you a little bit about them. They were sorcerers. They played in the black magic. And if they wanted to escape you, they would turn into an animal. Who you say? I know somebody like that. No, we're not, we're not going there today. But they're... <laughs> Somebody said, ooh, I'm, getting, I'm quitting him, I'm quitting him, I'm quitting him, because he turned into a dirty lowdown. We're not going to do that to get today, because the battle's not yours, it's the Lord's, right? It's the Lord's. Okay, so these are Malachites. They had the ability to turn into dogs and, and frogs and roaches and rats and stuff and all kind of creepy, crawly things. Somebody, uh, a Malachite. No, that's a roach, girl. Excuse me. No. I, oh, we in church. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. And Moses said to Joshua, <laughs> God said, well, my grace is sufficient, so I'm going to keep preaching. Okay. <laughs> Choose us some men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill. With the rod of God in my hands. Mm, mm, mm. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. So it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Ooh. So when he had his hands up, the fight was going good. Kind of like a cross. You know what I'm saying? Moses standing up there with his hands up like a cross on the top of the hill. Joshua down in the valley like us fighting. And every time Moses put his hands down, the enemy got the best of the Israelites. 
Moses got so tired that they had to come and hold his arms up for him so the fight could go on. Now, I know that you've got some people in your life that hold your arms up for you when you're in the fight of your life. And when your arms are up, outstretched, you are winning the battle. See, God wants you to be a success. Hold your arms up. Now, Moses could have said, I'm God's main man. You warlocks. You dogs. You want to be dogs, wolves, cats, and birds. But Moses remained humble. And there's a promise in the Old Testament. Let me go to it right now. Psalm 37, verse 11. Look at this. Come on with me. I ain't going to be that long, but I still want you to come with me. See, that's what all those preachers say. <laughs> Psalm 37, verse 11. And this is a promise from the Old Testament. And I thank the Lord. Hallelujah. It says here, verse 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth. See, uh, this Old Testament, we're not at the Sermon on the Mount yet. You know, it says, but the meek, the ones that are needy, the ones that are oppressed, the ones that have been mistreated. You say, I've been mistreated. Good, you're counted in now. You've been counted in. If you don't lose your cool. As meek. Thank you, Lord. Lowly, poor, wretched, not puffed up, not proud, not arrogant, not girl. I wish you look. <laughs> not that. And look what God says. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in an abundance of peace. If you lay low, just like Jesus, they were gambling over his clothes, spitting in his face. He laid low. He humbled himself, the Bible says, Philippians said. He humbled himself even to the point of death. He could have just said, <laughs> and that would have been it. But he humbled himself. And look at the success. Look, you're here. You're here. It looked cloudy. It looked like the Malachites was getting ready to get them, but and then, thank you, Lord. In Matthew chapter five, verse five, I believe. Matthew chapter five, verse five. It says, "Blessed Jesus talking." Blessed are the meek, for they'll inherit everything, everything that's godly, everything, if you remain humble like Moses, meek. He said, well, what am I supposed to be doing? You're supposed to be keeping that word in your mouth meditating on it day and night do what it tells you to do you want a relationship do what it tells you to do love your neighbors as you love yourself so love so y'all ain't trying to hear about romance i guess so love if you want love give love
Well, what's, what's the bottom line, Pastor? What is the bottom line? What are you telling us, Pastor? Well, let's go to Psalm 57. And this is something that gets you right between the eyes. Let me get you. Let me get you. Psalm, all right, 57. All right. Somebody said, I'm going to play that today. But that's only two digits, so you're going to add something to it. Okay, that's all right. Somebody said, well, this, I put, yeah, that's right. I'm going to just, yeah. <laughs> so I want to be a successful number player. Oh, oh. Well, if you hit, bring your tithes to the storehouse, I tell you. Just bring them on in. Just bring them on in. And God will make room for it. I tell you, he'll make some room for you. So listen to this, you guys. This is so good because it's important. Mm, mm, mm. See, God doesn't promise success if your plans are not his. Can I just say that? He's not promising you that you're going to be successful if he didn't tell you to do it. See, the Lord sent me here to come to some people that are going to do what he says and they're going to expect the right results because that's what God said. Okay, so you got Psalm 57, verse 2. It says, I will cry out to God most high, to God who performs all things for me. It's God who performs all things for you. It is not you who brings something to pass. It's God that brings something to pass. You might want to get married, but get out the way. Let God bring it to pass. You might want a new home, but get out of the way. Let God bring it to pass. You want your kids to act right? Shut up. After you've done what you could do, you've taught them. You disciplined them. You train them in the way they ought to go. Then expect God to make the plan happen. That's why it's going to be a success. Because God is doing it, not us. See, if the battle's his, so is the promise. So is the realization of the promise. It's on God to make sure that that thing happens for you in your life that he promised you. Well, one lady in the back fainted because she couldn't get it. It is on God to make that thing happen. You don't have to kick the door. May I speak to your supervisor? I know it's somebody in charge up in here. No, you didn't tell me no. It's something, isn't it? Y'all didn't know I had a rubber neck, did you? <laughs> See, we all used to be something. <laughs> Somebody said, oh my goodness, I'm, what kind of church is this? What kind of people is this? God-fearing people. So let's go back to Psalm 37 for me. And I'm going to tell you two or three things you got to do, and you know it already. People love this Psalm 37. And when you get in a storm of your life, you maybe you need to turn it up, open it up and just lay it in your house and just be open. You walk by and you might say, hmm, fret not because of evildoers. You might walk, fret not because of evildoers. You know, when you hear a little confusion, fret not because of evildoers, fret not, fret not, fret not because of evildoers. The Amalekites turned into dogs and they're trying to chase me. Fret not, fret not, fret not. Fret not. How you doing? Fret not. Don't do it. Don't fret. The enemy's just trying to make you fret. Oh, here they come. The boogeyman. We were kids. We had a little coconut head uh, and had the eyes cut out of it. My brother, man of God, not proud, all that. But when he was about this big, we called this thing Bula Bula. And we wanted to really scare my brother Chipper. I hope he's not listening. Because he'd get to be bad sometime. That's how it goes. Somebody saying the guy was bad when they was little, except me. 
We say, ooh, Chipper, Bula Bula going to get you. Bula Bula, Chipper. And he go run, Bula Bula, Bula Bula. Don't get me Bula. Oh, Bula Bula. But he's learned by being in the word of God to fret not. Fret not. Psalm 37. Verse one, fret not because of evildoers, no be envious of the workers of iniquity, because they will soon be cut down like the grass and wither as a green herb. Mm. Yes, just like God told Moses. And then he told Saul, he said, I want you to blot out. No, he said, I'm going to blot out the Amalekites. See, ooh, God, when God said, I'm going to blot out somebody like you were never here before ever you sorcerer you roach verse 3 God is telling us here and this is a psalm of David trust in the Lord and do good he's telling us what to do David was the apple of God's eye he said, dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Oh, that's good, knowing he's coming. Sit back. He's going to fight the battle. God fighting my battle. Just keep my hands up. God fighting. God fighting. God, oh, God fighting. Yeah, I'm not going to fret because of evildoers. <laughs> God fighting. <laughs> God fighting. Fret not. God wants me to be a success. Fret not. Yeah, sometimes we think, people have you think, God, he's after you. He want to get you. No, God, mm, God wants you to be a success. Fret not. And right here we're seeing, it says here, dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Verse four, delight yourself in the Lord. Ooh, let him make you happy. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. Those things that are in your heart that, that he placed there. And all you got to do is commit your way to him and trust in him. You want to be a success? Keep his word in your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. I bet Moses, as he was holding his stuff up there, he was probably saying, meditate day and night. Fret not. Trust in the Lord with all my heart. Lean not on my own understanding. In all my ways, acknowledge him. and He's going to direct my path. Yeah. All my ways, acknowledge him. I'll see, I'm meditating on it. Mm -hmm. I trust him. I commit myself, you, when you, and you have committed yourself to him and trust in him, you will have good success in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All is well. 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 God is so merciful. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Fret not. It doesn't matter what's going to happen this week. Fret not. But, but see, you don't have to worry about that. Because the Amalekites have already been blotted out. They've been blotted out. Anybody mess with God's people and he's taking us to the land of promise? They better not mess with us. He will blot them out. Who broke your heart? They're going to be blotted out. I'm talking blotted out. I'm talking blotted out. You, where the Malachites live? You don't know, do you? Because they've been blotted out. Your enemy, Corona. It is always associated blotted out in the name of Jesus. 
raise it as an offering to the Lord. Anybody that comes up against God's people is coming up against God. I just want you to minister on that, on that guitar. Period. So you might want to go home today. I want you to raise your hand. Ask God, Lord, what is the plan? Not, Lord, this is my plan. Oh, yes. Yes, and this. And this. Did you get that, God? Bye, I got to go to the club. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Lord, what is it you want me to do? Lord, what is your plan for my life? Have we asked that? You in particular, get somewhere quiet and let the Lord speak to you. You know his voice. And he's going to tell you that he's going to make you a success. In Jesus' name. Let's stand to our feet for dismissal. Oh, stand to your feet, but let me do this. Because there's some people out there that are ready to come on in to the family. If it's you, the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you're saved. So repeat after me, those, all of us, so we can all just not leave anybody out. Dear Father, I am sorry for my sins. I'm really sorry, Lord. I want Jesus to come into my heart. And be Lord of my life. I ask these things. In Jesus name. Amen. You prayed that prayer. You're set. But don't just settle for the minimal. Although that's a great deal. It's everything in the world. It really is to have the Lord. But open yourself up to the land of promise. Because God wants you to have good success. So as you go this week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May you be blessed going in and blessed coming out. May you be a lender, not a borrower. May you be the head and not the tail. May he bless you. May he keep you. To keep your feet lest you dash your foot against a rock. He will keep you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he lift up his face towards you. And give you perfect peace. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll see you next time. We love you.